Fisker, a small automaker, has been making waves in the last couple of weeks, and not in a good way. And this has led many people, including myself, wondering if this is the beginning of the end for Fisker. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Fisker, you know that Fisker is no stranger to, well, hardships. I don't really know how else to put it. Now, the history and past of Fisker is messy to say the least, and for the sake of not making this video 30 minutes long, I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson on the company, but I'm going to keep some of these points brief. Fisker Automotive was founded in 2007, and they released their first production car, the Fisker Karma, in 2012, around the same time that the Tesla Model S was released. Now, the Fisker Karma and the Tesla Model S were going after a very similar segment of buyer. Both of these cars were pretty expensive. They both were EVs or hybrids. Both were very one-of-a-kind vehicles. Though I will admit that the Fisker Karma was definitely a much more quirky vehicle than the Model S. And both of these cars were considered to be a high-end sedan. The Model S was, of course, also full electric, while the Fisker Karma was a hybrid. And the Model S was, and still is, very sleek and very tech-focused, while the Fisker, at least in my opinion, had a much more exotic appearance. It had solar panels on the roof, a very large front end. It was a really cool car. And truthfully, reliability aside, I'm a big fan of the Fisker Karma. I think that this is an extremely sharp car and I think it's aged extremely well considering the fact that it was released 13, 14 years ago. Fisker was sort of poised to become a top competitor to Tesla because they were kind of the only automaker doing something similar to what Tesla was trying to do. Both of these brands were very new, very sexy, and at least from the general public's perspective, could be perceived as very similar cars. Though obviously now looking back on it, they were different and they did have quite a lot of differences about them. The Fisker Karma was rolled out in 2011, around the same time that the Model S was, but due to recalls, a soul-crushing review from Consumer Reports where a brand new Fisker Karma broke down when reviewing the car, fire incidents, and a lawsuit from Tesla, Fisker drowned, and Fisker and the Fisker Karma were never really able to become what Tesla and the Tesla Model S went on to become. Fisker filed for bankruptcy in 2013 and sort of became Karma Automotive in 2014 whenever they were sold to a Chinese partner Part supplier. But Henrik Fisker, the founder and former CEO of Fisker, actually held on to the name and trademarks of the brand, and he went on to form Fisker Inc. in 2016. And Fisker Inc. is basically the exact same thing as Fisker Automotive, but believe it or not, it's actually a bigger show. Fisker Inc. went public, they hit their peak in 2021 at about $20 per share, and today they're a penny stock at 31 cents per share. In fact, as I record this video, Fisker has hit a new 52-week low. So this brings us up to speed as to where Fisker has been. But now we have to dive into what is going on with the brand today that leads automotive experts into believing that Fisker as a company may be on the brink of bankruptcy. Fisker Inc., the new and improved Fisker Fisker Automotive announced the Fisker Ocean in 2021. The Ocean featured a similar solar panel roof to the Karma, but was an all-electric SUV or crossover. The Fisker Ocean is going after the same segment of buyers as the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mach-E. The Ocean was intended to be the first of a series of EVs from Fisker, followed by the Fisker Pair, the Fisker Ronin, and the Fisker Alaska. The Fisker Pair was a compact SUV, the Ronin being a sports car and the Alaska being a truck. And the Fisker Ocean started to be delivered in May of 2023. Now, the rollout and delivery of the Fisker Ocean has admittedly been very slow, but I'm not going to use this as a ding towards the company as a whole, because all things considered, past aside, Fisker is a relatively new company, and they definitely are considered a startup where things stand today. So the fact that they are rolling out deliveries really slow, and they kind of haven't met expectations, it's something that is pretty normal with brands in a similar position. We saw this with Tesla very early on with them, and we've definitely seen it with Rivian. And because of this, I don't want to hone too much into the production issues because the real problem with the Fisker Ocean isn't the production, it's actually the quality control and the problems that the Ocean is having. There have been hundreds of report of Fisker Ocean customers who've been driving on the road and have either lost power of their vehicle or have reported a slew of other issues. In fact, there was a pretty scathing report from TechCrunch that was released earlier this year talking about how the first batch of Fisker Oceans that were delivered were delivered to people like the CFO of Fisker, board members, and even Henrik Fisker's wife himself. And these same owners who you would think would be getting the best quality Fisker Oceans available have reported having issues like driving on the road and having their car completely lose power on them. In fact, this happened to Fisker board members, Fisker CFO, and Henrik Fisker's wife. Like, as the car is driving, it just dies. 
dies. Now Fisker will die on the hill that these issues that these Fisker oceans are having are one-off and they're very rare. But the reality is, is that according to the NHTSA as well as third-party reports, there have been hundreds of reports of Fisker oceans dying and hundreds of other reports of other more minor issues. In as of about January or February of 2024, there had only been about 4,900 Fisker oceans delivered. So whenever we talk about a few hundred that have had this dying issue in the context of only 4,900 being delivered, I certainly wouldn't call this an extremely rare problem. And according to the same TechCrunch report that I mentioned earlier that was published last month, there have also been hundreds of other reports of other issues that customers have had. Things like braking issues and the brakes just losing power. Key fob issues that leave customers either locked inside or outside of the vehicle. Seat sensor problems and even reports of the hood flying up while the driver is driving. To make matters worse, about a year ago, Fisker announced that they would have a partnership with Bridgestone, which would give customers of the Fisker Ocean access to Bridgestone service centers. Now this at the time was a pretty big deal because for these newer automakers like Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, these automakers that are going direct to consumer rather than going the traditional dealership route, one of the biggest pain points for these customers is service centers because Rivian, Tesla, Lucid, these automakers don't have as many service centers as say a Toyota Toyota, a Chevy, a Ford. And because of this, servicing these types of cars, if they do have a problem, can be extremely inconvenient. This is less of an issue with Tesla as Tesla has grown, but it certainly is a problem with Lucid and Rivian. And it is one with Fisker as well. So Fisker announced this partnership with Bridgestone that would bridge this gap to make it so that Fisker customers would have access to a lot of different service centers. But as we sit here today, this Bridgestone partnership still hasn't come to fruition, meaning that customers that have problems with their Fisker oceans well, getting those problems fixed is incredibly inconvenient. Now, keep in mind that whenever automakers have these types of problems that are really issues at the point of production and they roll out the car anyways, these problems are extremely costly to fix. And companies like GM, Toyota, Ford, even Tesla at this point as they've grown, they can afford and they can absorb that cost because they are so big and because they make so much money. But with companies like Fisker who are brand new and are reporting these types of problems, fixing these issues can be extremely detrimental because they're so expensive expensive to fix. And truthfully, these problems can become deadly as a result of the high cost. And this, paired with the struggle to ramp up production, has left Fisker in very uncertain times. By the end of 2023, Fisker had announced that they're cutting production outlook for, and they've also said that they're gonna need to rely on dealership networks and outside funds to keep the company going. And so from a production and financial outlook, things just don't really look good for the company. And well, that really brings us to present day. Because in the last couple of weeks, if you thought that Fisker as a company was on fire, well, recently gasoline has been poured on that fire. And this is where things get really interesting. And I'm gonna be honest, borderline entertaining. Three weeks ago, Marquez Brownlee, an extremely well-known YouTuber, tech and automotive reviewer, reviewed the Fisker Ocean on one of his secondary channels, Autofocus, where he does car reviews. The important thing to know about Marquez Brownlee is that he's extremely well-respected. He's been in the tech review YouTube game for an extremely long time, and he's known as an authority figure in the space. Even Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, quoted him at a keynote last year. Marquez Brownlee isn't just a YouTuber, he's an extremely well-respected tech reviewer, car reviewer, and just YouTuber in general by not only the people who watch him, but also the companies that he reviews and interacts with. And well, he reviewed the Fisker Ocean about three weeks ago, and the review was not good. In fact, this is probably one of the best real world examples of the song Exile by Taylor Swift. I think I've seen this film before. remember correctly, like I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the nails in the coffin for the Fisker Karma was the absolutely horrendous review from Consumer Reports. And I think that if Fisker ends up going belly up in the next couple of years, I personally believe that this review by Marquez really could be one of the attributing reasons as to why the company ends up going bankrupt. Certainly it isn't the only issue, but I think it will be one of the factors that we reference for years to come. The review by Marquez Brownlee and Autofocus was 20 minutes long, so I'm not gonna go over all of it here, but I will have a link to it down in the description below and I really encourage you to check it out. But the video starts out on a really poor note because he titled the video, this is the worst car I've ever reviewed. Viewed. Marquez talks at the beginning about how he had to get this Fisker Ocean from a Mitsubishi dealership because Fisker wouldn't give him one because they stated that they actually need to do an update on all of their Fisker Oceans to a 2.0 software that would fix a lot of the issues that the Fisker Ocean was having. So Fisker didn't want Marquez to review this car until they had all of the issues fixed. 
But in his video, Marquez talks about how he didn't want to do that because his policy is to review the car as it stands today. And if Fisker is sending out cars without this 2.0 update and people are driving cars that have these problems that this 2.0 update is supposed to fix, then that's the car that Marquez wants to review. He wants to review what people have in their hands today, not what Fisker is going to present in a couple of weeks or in a couple of months. He then goes into the actual review where he talks about how the fundamentals of the Fisker Ocean are actually quite good. He likes the look of the car, he likes the back seat, he likes the interior, but it really isn't until you spend some extended time with the car that you start to notice the issues that it does have. Like first of all is the solar panels which are on the roof and are supposed to offer a charge for the vehicle. But the problem is, is that the software of the Fisker Ocean doesn't actually let you know how much of a charge these solar panels are contributing. So there's sort of that undertone question of, are these solar panels on the roof actually doing anything at all? Are they actually functional or are they just for show? Because nowhere on the Fisker Ocean can you actually see how these solar panels are contributing to the overall charge because remember the ocean is an EV. He had other minor complaints like bad sun visors, poor storage, no glove box. The driving modes on the car aren't as interchangeable or as different as they should be and they're also hard to use. One of the oddest things was the Fisker launch control which in the ocean is known as boost. Tesla has launch control and they kind of coined the term. Well, in the ocean, you have a limited number of launches, 500. So whenever you buy the Fisker Ocean, you actually don't have an unlimited number of launch controls that you can use. You're limited to 500. So if you use one, you then have 499. If you use another one, 498 and so on and so on, which is just weird. And I personally hate stuff like that. If I'm buying a car, don't limit what I can do with that car. Just let me use it the way that I want to use it. But the bulk of his complaints came from software, from startup issues, rear camera issues, Bluetooth and more. Issues that truthfully probably would have been resolved with that 2.0 software update. But as Marquez said, the car was being sold as is to buyers, so he wanted to review it as is. Now what's funny is that I think Marquez Brownlee's review wasn't actually as bad as the Consumer Reports one with the Fisker Karma years ago. The Consumer Reports review for the Fisker Karma was pretty scathing because Consumer Reports was like, yeah, we'd love to review this car, but we couldn't keep it running long enough to do one. Buyer beware. It's also broken right here in the middle of our driveway. The car doesn't go in gear, it doesn't move. The dealer has to come with a flatbed and take it away. And hopefully they can fix it. Well, to find out more about our adventures of living with the Fisker Karma, check into consumerreports.org. Well, Marquez Brownlee actually had some positive things to say about the car, though he did say that the car had a ton of bugs, which is a review that I certainly wouldn't describe as scathing, but I also wouldn't describe as positive. But what really took this review from autofocus and made it so much worse was Fisker's response. However a company should respond to a bad review or a PR crisis, Fisker actually responded in like the opposite way. Fisker ended up getting in contact with the Mitsubishi dealership that Marquez got the Fisker Ocean from. And the conversation was just weird. Good morning, George. How are you, sir? Good, good. Who's this? Um, my name's Russ, Whitt Russ Whitlow. I work for Fisker. Oh, okay. <laughs> How can I help you? Well, can I pull your fingernails out and put, as part of an inquisition? <laughs> I've got to ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind. I assume that Fisker was unaware that this conversation was recorded, but it was recorded and it was posted on TikTok and I will include a link to it down in the description below. But it was a senior engineer calling from Fisker to this dealership asking for Marquez Brownlee's information. There was some back and forth with the dealership as it seemed as though Fisker thought that Marquez Brownlee had actually purchased the Fisker and not just borrowed it, at which point the dealership let them know that he was just loaning it and they were getting it back and all of these other sorts of details. But throughout the conversation, the senior engineer at Fisker said he wanted to go up there and fix the car himself. He also referred to Marquez Brownlee as just some kid and also a mouthpiece. If you could just share this guy's information, I'll be grateful. MKHVD, whatever he is, um, that you own the car. This guy did um, a review. The car's being returned to you. He doesn't own the car. He doesn't own the car. And, I'll, and I, will I will attend you to take care of the car in the next few days. My job is to take care of you, the customer. Not a mouthpiece. Got um, it. All right. If you could just let me know who this kid is, I'm going to fire an email into senior management. I think that the review from Marquez would have blown over extremely quickly and I really don't think it would have been that big of a deal had Fisker just either A, been extremely apologetic, handled the situation with class and even called the dealership up to apologize and say that they're going to fix the situation or B, I honestly think that they would have been better off just staying quiet. 
Now, like I mentioned, obviously Fisker probably didn't know that this video was being recorded or else they probably would have handled it differently. But I think that the fact that this was a conversation that was had behind closed doors really speaks volumes to how Fisker really views the situation as a whole. And I think that they would have been best off had they handled it with class, had that video been recorded and then released, and then people could look at Fisker and say, you know, they handled this really well. I may buy a Fisker Ocean because of how well they handled this. But instead the exact opposite is happening and people are really slamming Fisker for their poor and condescending response and the fact that they didn't really own up to their problem, which is the fact that they released a car that really wasn't ready to be released. And because of Fisker's response, this has now resulted in multiple viral moments because the review of Autofocus, so that initial video by Marquez Brownlee, the top comment on that video says that they came from Fisker's senior engineer video. So there are a lot of people that probably would have never found that Autofocus video had that response video from Fisker not blown up like it did. Now this is all kind of happening in real time and I think that we will see the long-term effects of what this review and really what the poor rollout and execution of the Fisker Ocean and how this will impact Fisker long-term. But short-term, this video and this response from Fisker did cause Fisker stock to go down. And so there definitely has been a large impact on the company from these moments that are happening in the last couple of weeks. But short term, these videos did cause Fisker stock to go down to the 52 week low. And so there definitely has been a much larger impact than I think Fisker was anticipating. And as you know, the senior engineer said in his video, Marcus Brownlee isn't just some YouTuber, some mouthpiece or some kid. He's a real influential figure in this space. And the fact that the situation was handled so poorly, I think it will have long-term effects on the company. And I think it could be a real nail in the coffin to the bankruptcy of Fisker if they do end up having to file for bankruptcy. But ultimately only time will tell and nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen. But I do think that 2024, we will find out a lot about the future fate of this company. But one thing is definitely sure, if I was a betting person, I wouldn't be betting on Fisker Inc. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.